Hello and welcome to Gapy's Garden. We've been in the middle of a big heat wave this week. Today was the hottest day. It got up to 99 degrees Fahrenheit and without AC, that is extremely uncomfortable. So I waited till it's about eight o'clock in, in the evening today that we're doing this video just to let it cool off a little bit. Um, but yeah, very, very hot. And it is supposed to cool down a little bit tomorrow. I think we're gonna be in the 80s, which is a little bit more tolerable. But I thought I'd take you on a little tour around the garden and show you what we've been harvesting from the garden this time of year. I'm always super excited for our first zucchinis. This is the Green Machine F1 Hybrid Zucchini. And we picked our first one, I think it was on Sunday, but we've got a couple more that are ready to pick. This one here is the perfect size here. We've got a few more in here doing really well. I'm sure in about three or four weeks, I'm gonna be sick and tired of zucchini. We're gonna go ahead and harvest this guy. Really easy to harvest. This one is the Goldini zucchini. This one is not as far along. Um, this is one I've been growing every year. It's a yellow zucchini, but this one isn't quite ready to harvest. I planted a ton of lettuce this spring. I pretty much lined the borders of a few of the beds with lettuce, so we've got a ton. And with this heat, everything is bolting, at least almost everything. But I have been harvesting a lot of lettuce. I've also been feeding some of the, the lettuce to the chickens that have bolted. But I wanted to show you one variety in particular. This one is called Tegan, and as you can see, it has not bolted. So this one is more of a heat tolerant variety that I got from row seven seeds. So it is looking really good. The rabbits have been munching on it, but I think we finally um, locked the rabbits out of here. But um, this one is pretty much ready to harvest and it's not bolting at all. I have a few more of those in the garden. There's one here. Um, this one here isn't bolting, but that is a different variety. And see all these holes around the lettuce and that is caused by these guys here, there's tons of slugs in the garden. Um, and this here is our collards. I don't grow collards too often because we don't really eat it very much, um, but I did grow one this year and it is pretty much ready to harvest. I've also got a few different varieties of kale. This one is dazzling blue kale. This one got munched pretty much all the way down to the ground by the rabbits, but I put this uh, cage around it. This is just chicken wire and that has kept the, the rabbits out so it is bounced back pretty nicely and that one is ready to harvest. We just harvest the outer leaves and then it just keeps growing. Something else we have here that is pretty much ready to harvest is the sea kale. This is something that I started from seed last year and it is a perennial so it survived our harsh winter this past winter and it is doing really well. I haven't decided or looked up what to do with it, so I need to do that and harvest some and see how it goes. But it is a very, it's very tough. So I think maybe, I don't know, it might go well in a soup or something. If you grow sea kale or ever had sea kale, let me know what it is you do with it. Back here behind the beehives, we've got some volunteer strawberries that I pretty much let go wild and we've been harvesting quite a few of uh, the strawberries back here, but they're almost done. I think we still have a, a few little guys straggling, but I think it's starting to get too hot for a lot of the strawberries. Here's another pretty decent one. Speaking of beehives, we've also been harvesting some blackberry honey um, this month. They've been bringing in tons and tons of honey. This hive has two boxes of honey on it. Uh, let's see, this one does not have any. There's, I think this one may be queenless. I need to do another inspection. Uh, that hive swarmed and the queen took off with the swarm and they should have created a new queen for the hive, but the last time I checked on them, the queen had not been laying. So I'll be checking on that one soon. And then this one has one honey super on it and we've got three beehives in the front yard as well that are bringing in loads of honey. Now I really need to take care of this bed here. This has got the mint and we've got some lemon balm in here and the lemon balm is starting to flower and it won't be long before it starts going to seed. And I waited too long to chop it down last year and we're getting lots of 
lemon balm coming up all over in places that I don't want it to be. So I need to get that taken care of before it's too late. And same thing with the mint. The mint is going to be flowering here before too long. And if I don't cut it soon, it's going to reseed everywhere. Something else we've been harvesting a ton of the past, I don't know, three or four weeks now is this uh, beer guard, I think it's called, it's snow pea from row seven seeds. This thing is just totally loaded with purple pods and they're starting to get rather large because I we just can't eat them fast enough. There are just so many. And I am noticing that we're starting to see some yellowing on the leaves from I think all of the sun that we've been getting and the heat. I think the other side might, I think this side has gets more sun than this side over here. Um, but we are seeing a little bit of, of yellowing on some of the leaves. But I'm thinking of just waiting till, I think these might be too big to eat that way. So we might shell some peas and see how that is. But these stay purple when you cook them, which is pretty cool. Actually, I think I'm gonna open one of these and see what it looks like. So this is the first pea that I've opened. We usually just eat the whole pod when they're a little bit younger. Well, we got some pretty nice sized peas in there. I'm actually not a very big pea fan, but these are not too shabby. I'd eat these. Mm. Next to this sea kale, we have one of our beets that's still in the ground. I harvested quite a few of them. Um, I think it was last weekend and we roasted those up for dinner. So I've got one left there that's probably ready to harvest. And I think we've only got one more over here next to one of our peppers. This one, I'm not sure if that one's ready or not. Looks like that one's buried a little bit deeper. This is our blueberry bed that is covered in a bird barricade netting by DeWitt that we got on Amazon. It is the best net that we've found that does not Birds just don't get stuck in it, which is why we like it so much. And it's super easy to handle. It doesn't get all tangled up, but it is a little bit expensive. Uh, we found it on Amazon and I'll put a link to that in the description of the video if you're curious um, which one we have. Um, but anyway, we have the blueberries under the netting to protect the, the blueberries from the birds because we are starting to get lots and lots of ripe blueberries. They're doing much better than they did last year. We didn't really hardly get any last year and I, I actually didn't even bother putting the netting on last year because of that but this year it looks like we're going to get a pretty good crop of blueberries so we need to start harvesting these because they are starting to be ready and we've got 10 bushes under the netting and another thing that's in there which I am kind of regretting putting in there is a rhubarb and the rhubarb is also ready to harvest we already did one harvest of the rhubarb and looks like it's ready to get harvested again. Lastly is our herb bed. That's pretty much the only other thing we've been harvesting from. We've got lots of sage here. This has been in here for several, several years. Um, but I have a new sage that I just added. This is a, a white sage and I'm pretty sure that's a different sage than what I already had. But I grew this one from seed and it is doing really well. Um, I started it, I think, in maybe February I started those, and it's doing really well. Um, this is some time that I've had overwintered. Uh, I actually divided that from what I have in the greenhouse. We've got some golden oregano over here that I really cut back pretty hard, so it's just starting to fill in again. I've got a little chamomile that I transplanted from the multitude of chamomiles. Actually, I pulled most of them out, but here's one. We have chamomile coming up pretty much all over the pathways because it just volunteers everywhere. And then what else do we have? Oh, I also transplanted this, I think it's catmint that we had in the bed that the, the corn is growing in and it died over winter, but I think it started reseeding itself. So I decided to pull up one of the little seedlings and plant it in here. And then this is a new addition that we just picked up a few weeks ago. This one is a creeping savory that we got at a, a local plant sale. 
And I've got my grow Oya in here. If you haven't seen these before, it's like a clay container that you fill with water. Might be getting, oh, there's still quite a bit of water in there. I just filled it up yesterday, but it helps keep the, the ground watered so you don't have to water as often. And then I've also got a rue that I cut back pretty hard here recently as well. This is a monster rosemary that we got at Costco and I've been harvesting quite a bit of that and using it in some of our meals. It is starting to get a little bit sunburned I think. Um, I have been watering it pretty much every day as well as the figs because this heat is just taking its toll on a lot of the container plants but um, I'm planning on probably taking a lot of this and maybe drying it for the winter. We have not yet harvested the garlic, but it is looking very ready. It's probably two or three weeks behind where we were last year with the garlic, but we're starting to see the bottom few leaves are dying on the garlic, and that is a, a sign that it's ready to harvest. I did harvest a couple of those in here that had a lot more leaves that were dead, um, and I wasn't too happy with the looks of it. In June, we got a whole lot of rain and this bed was still pretty wet. So I'm going to pull this one out and let's see if this one is looking any better. Oof. Yeah, so that's still a little bit wet. It looks better than the other ones that I pulled out, but I could tell the, the soil is still pretty, pretty wet there. Um, so we're going to cure this in the, the greenhouse for a couple weeks and hopefully um, it will be okay. But I'm going to be harvesting the rest of this garlic probably this week. Uh, I've got a mix of hardneck and softneck varieties. That one there was called Bogatir. It's a spicy softneck variety, I believe, actually. It might be a hardneck variety. Um, but I've got a mix of those in here. The, the hardneck varieties grow these garlic scapes, which I harvested. And we use, usually put those on the grill. But you can see there's a little stub from where we harvested those, but softneck does not get those garlic scapes. And the softneck varieties I have over here are Nootka Rose and let's see what's the other one, Kettle River Giant. I'm going to try something different this year with the garlic before I cure it. Usually I just kind of wipe the, the dirt off and then cure it in the greenhouse that way. But I saw someone recently actually peel the garlic a little bit before curing it which I usually don't peel it until after it's done curing. So they just take this, the dried up leaves and just do that. And that kind of reveals the nice, pretty white interior. And there is still some paper or husk on there. So this is the part that's going to cure and that'll dry up hopefully nice and it will store pretty well. So I'm going to try that this year on I think maybe not all the garlics. I think I'll do it on half of them and see how that works. And if it works pretty well, then I might start doing it that way from now on. But it looks so much prettier without that dirty husk on the outside. I hope you enjoyed the quick tour of what I've been harvesting in the garden this time of year. I'm going to go ahead and harvest the rest of this garlic, at least the, the Bogatier variety here, and get this curing because I have a lot of garlic to harvest this week. Um, I hope you're having a, a successful gardening season. Let me know what things you're harvesting in your garden right now. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.